I'm Ian Gemp, and this is Eigengame, PCA as a Nash Equilibrium. This is joint work with Brian McWilliams, Claire Vernod, and Tori Grable. In this work, we develop a scalable algorithm for top K singular value decomposition, equivalently top K PCA, that distributes over multiple devices. The SVD is central to many core machine learning tools, and as such, sees wide use across industrial applications and scientific disciplines. But how we do this is important. We deliberately reformulate singular value decomposition as the solution to a game. And we show how playing this game resembles Hebbian learning descriptions of what's happening in the brain. The motivation for this work was less about singular value decomposition or PCA and more about shifting the way we think about algorithm design. Can we reinvent machine learning from the ground up with multi-agent in mind? Why should we do this? One theory of cognition developed by Marvin Minsky views the mind as being built from a society of sub-agents. In contrast to the popular single objective or optimization paradigm of AI and machine learning, a society of mind might be more naturally distributed, decentralized, and biologically plausible. Also, we are not the first to pose a traditional mach machine learning task as a game. Generative adversarial networks pose generative modeling as a two-player zero-sum game and have seen enormous success. Likewise, we pose PCA as an n-player general-sum game. Over the past few decades, inventing new loss functions and, object and objectives have become natural to researchers. We hope that additional exercises like this one in formulating machine learning problems as games will make it feel more natural, as well as give us a better understanding of the benefits of this mechanism design paradigm. As a specific exercise, we consider singular value decomposition. Why? SVD is a root node of the machine learning tree and underlies many core tools, such as principal component analysis, spectral clustering, proto value functions, latent semantic analysis, least squares, and so on which are critical to data scientists, biologists, chemists, and others. The purpose of this research was to reinvent top K SVD as a game. In order to do so, we needed to define players, their utilities, and their strategy spaces. Next, we needed to prove that the top K SVD is the Nash equilibrium of the game. And finally, we needed to design a distributed algorithm to solve for the Nash. So how would we design an Eigen game? Consider trying to extract the top K principal axes or components of the following data cloud. We'll have K players, one for each axis, and each will control a vector on the unit sphere. But what would make for appropriate utilities? Intuitively, we want players to balance two goals. One is to align with directions that capture maximum variance in the data. The other is to remain orthogonal to each other. We can derive this intuition directly from the eigenvalue problem. Specifically, we want to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the data covariance matrix M equals X transpose X. The data covariance matrix M is a real symmetric matrix. Therefore, it admits an orthonormal set of eigenvectors, so we can add an additional constraint to our desired solution. Left multiplying the eigenvalue problem by V transpose and using the orthonormality constraint to simplify gives us the following equivalent problem where V transpose MV is equal to a diagonal matrix lambda. That is to say the eigenvectors V diagonalize M. The matrix V transpose MV is below. In order for this matrix to be diagonal, the off diagonal terms in blue must be zero. These terms measure how much each pair of vectors aligns with each other. In addition, for top K PCA, we want to maximize the diagonal terms in red, whose sum represents the total variance captured by the top K vectors. Now we will construct utilities from the terms in each row. Each player will seek a direction that, assigns, that aligns with high variance of the data while also avoiding aligning with players associated with higher rows. We cannot use the blue terms as they come because they are not naturally positive, and we want to incorporate them into the utilities as penalties. We square them to ensure they are positive and then rescale them with the denominator terms for, to balance or match units with the red variance term. 
This row-wise construction of utilities induces a hierarchy. For example, the first player is only encouraged to maximize variance as its row only contains a red term. In contrast, player K is encouraged to maximize variance, but also penalized for aligning with its K-1 parents. At runtime, each player must communicate its vector down the hierarchy so that its children may compute their utilities. One outcome of this construction is that these two terms are perfectly balanced. No coefficients or Lagrange multipliers are necessary, suggesting we have landed on a natural definition of the problem. This game satisfies the desired property that PCA is the unique Nash equilibrium. That is to say, the game we have constructed is appropriately designed to capture the PCA problem. Despite the utility function's somewhat abstruse form, its shape is actually quite simple. Each player's utility function turns out to be a sinusoid in the angular deviation from the true eigenvector direction. The utility for the first eigenvector is plotted as a contour map above. If the largest eigenvector was at the North Pole, there would be a large hill here. Standing at the top and looking out in any direction, you would see the hill roll down to a trench at the equator before rising again to a hill at the South Pole of the same height. The simplicity of the utility eases the analysis and makes it obvious why a simple optimization algorithm like gradient ascent might have success. If we examine the gradients of these utilities, we find that they have an interpretable form. They consist of two parts. First, a partial generalized Gram-Schmidt step that orthogonalizes eigenvector i with respect to the current values of each of its parents. Next, the resulting vector is multiplied by the matrix M, an operation common to many SVD algorithms such as power iteration or OIA's algorithm. Finally, we find that if each player optimizes with gradient ascent, they will, they will arrive at the Nash equilibrium. This is not true of most games. Independent optimization works well in this case because of the hierarchy we have imposed on the players through the utilities. To recap, to solve PCA using this game theoretic perspective, each player in parallel initializes their vector randomly on the sphere and maximizes their utility eventually arriving at the Nash equilibrium, which is also the top K PCA solution. I'll now pass to Brian for the latter half of the talk to cover related work and experiments. Thank you, Ian. There's been over a century of work on PCA since Pearson's and Hotelling's work in the early 1900s. Many distinct approaches to the problem have emerged, some of which are noted here. In particular, in the following, we will compare Eigengame against Sanger's algorithm, which is a Hebbian learning algorithm inspired by neuroscience, Krasolina's and Oya's algorithms, which are broadly stochastic gradient methods, and frequent directions, a sketching method which allows for efficient updates for streaming data. Eigengame combines many of the desirable properties from this diverse range of PCA solvers. Eigengame uses low-cost updates, which rely only on matrix vector products, with no calls to LAPAC routines. It's therefore fast and can be easily distributed across many workers. However, unlike the updates from Hebbian type algorithms, they're also well motivated as gradients of the individual player utilities in a game. We compare the performance of Eigengame in blue against the approaches mentioned in the previous slides on the MNIST dataset. Eigengame is competitive in terms of the number of required iterations for convergence. In this case, it is also significantly faster due to the fact that the computing the Eigengame updates simply amounts to parallelized matrix vector products, whereas other approaches such as Oya's algorithm use an expensive orthogonalization step after every update. In contrast, in Eigengame, orthogonalization is embedded into the player utilities through the alignment penalties and naturally parallelized through the parallel updates of the Eigengame players. Evaluating the large-scale performance of Eigengame, however, is more challenging there is a distinct lack of truly massive, publicly available benchmark datasets. To our knowledge, the largest experiments in the literature deal with at most 10 to the 10 non-zero entries. In this work, we create a massive dataset by taking a pre-trained ResNet 200 and concatenating its activations at every layer for each example of the ImageNet training set. This gives us a 20 million dimensional vector for each of the 1.2 million samples. The final dataset has 10 to the 13 non-zeros and is almost 200 terabytes in size. 
This is a technique that other researchers can use to create their own massive data sets for large-scale PCA research. Similar approaches could be used for smaller ResNet models or only taking the outputs at after every block rather than every activation. This experiment would be challenging to run on a single machine. Therefore, we make use of Google Cloud TPUs. However, our scheme generally applies to multi-device, multi-host systems with fast interconnects. As illustrated in the schematic on the left, each principal component is estimated using its own TPU. Parallelism is straightforward using JAX, and synchronization is handled using an all-gather operation which is fast on TPU. EigenGame finds the top 32 principal components using 32 TPUs in about 9 hours. The figure on the right shows the top 8 eigenvectors delineated vertically by which computational block in the network they belong to, and color-coded by their relative variation across principal components. We see that, for example, in principal component 1, the block closest to the output, which is highlighted in green, contributes proportionally more to the observed variation. This is because it is responsible for differentiating between classes, which constitutes the most important variation in the data. Here is an example of eigengame recovering well-known sorts of behaviors. This shows the principal activations in layer 1 averaged over the 64 filters and reshaped. We clearly see familiar oriented filters emerging, which are remarkably consistent within a principal component. It should be noted that this is the first time that principal components analysis has been able to be used to do a holistic analysis of an entire modern neural network, rather than just layer-wise. This highlights one possible use case of eigengame, that is to perform pr interpretable analyses of networks, which might allow us to diagnose training pathologies or visualize network behavior. We also compared eigengame against frequent directions, a sketching technique. We ran a scaled down version of our ResNet experiment and found that eigengame recovered better solutions over four times faster. This quote from Ali Rahimi's infamous alchemy talk at NeurIPS 2017 highlights how computation has evolved to meet the challenges of deep learning, while perhaps ignoring the demands of more traditional methods. The systems we have ready access to consist of many accelerators, such as GPUs or TPUs, linked with fast interconnects and are designed to shift high dimensional gradient vectors around at each iteration for data parallel neural network training. This is not a setup which, which traditional algorithms for QR, eigen decomposition, or SVD can immediately benefit from, and is significantly different from earlier distributed comp computing paradigms where communication efficiency was paramount. With this work, we have sought to answer this call to arms by taking advantage of these modern, AI-ready compute architectures. Eigengame is a distributed SVD solver that relies only on elementary matrix mathematics and so runs fast on TPUs. Synchronization between workers makes use of the fast interconnect. We demonstrated this by running what we believe to be the largest PCA experiments in the literature to date and show how Eigengame enables novel applications like analyzing the activations of large neural networks, highlighting how perhaps the classical and modern can coexist peacefully on the same hardware. We also consider the philosophical implications of this work. Taking a games-first approach to machine learning could naturally lead to parallelizable algorithms which allow us to exploit the speed and scale of modern compute. We develop close connections between our algorithm and Hebbian learning, suggesting that games might represent a natural way to think about parallel processes in Cortex. Finally, as Ian mentioned earlier, we take the position that as a community, practicing the art of mechanism design is crucial for the continued development of new ideas which push the field forward. We've identified some limitations of Eigengame. Firstly, its updates are biased and so are sensitive to batch size. We've addressed this in follow-up work titled Eigengame Unloaded, which is available in archive. Another issue concerns how convergence to the actual eigenvectors slows when the gap between successive eigenvalues is small, although this doesn't affect subspace convergence. This is an idea, this is an area that we are actively working on. So on behalf of Ian, Claire, Tora, and myself, thank you for attending our talk, and we'd be happy to answer any questions.